this is what, uh, this is the second lecture from uh, calculus two. Well, in this lecture, we will talk about the it's more like an introductory uh, lecture as well. We will talk about the distance formula, lines in the plane, and also about parametric uh, parametric uh, equations. Um, let's get uh, started. Uh, and then after that, I will do another video where I will talk about uh, functions and graphs. Probably this will be a little bit shorter than usual, but probably you'll uh, like it this way. Okay, so let's get started. Um, well, I would like to start with some basic algebra first, so let, but let's write the so distance formula. Um, lines in the planes and parametric equations. Okay. All right. First, I'd like to start with some preliminaries. Um, and well, the first thing that I want to do, and now, okay, let me do it like this. And now the first thing I want to discuss is uh, the distance between two points in the plane. Between two points in the plane. Well, you will see uh, it, it, it's not that hard, but and first let me start with the absolute value. And I assume of a real number. I assume some of you already know this, but um, I don't mind reminding you by the definition. Let me remind you that the absolute value of X and you write it in this way, so by the definition, this is plus x, positive x, if x is greater than 0, 0 if x is 0, and negative x if x is less than 0. So that's the definition of the absolute value of x. But now exactly, what does this mean? So the first question we want to address, what does the absolute value really mean? That is a question we want to address, right? Um, okay. Um, well, guess what? It's nothing else than just the distance between two points uh, on, on the real line. But I want to make myself very clear because when I have the absolute values, uh, absolute value of x, it means that I measured the distance from a point x from the origin, right? So in other words, uh, let me, the distance uh, between Um, two points on the real line um, or you can say um, how far uh, is it from um, number x to the number y. So how far are these two numbers, uh, how far they are from each other? In other words, let me just draw a picture so that you can see, uh, I'll draw a line. Here I have my point x, here I have my point y. And guess what? The distance between these two, it will be nothing else than just the absolute value of x minus y. So that's the distance between these two points. And now let me give you some examples, some quick examples. Uh, 
All right. For example, the distance um, between um, three and ten, let's say. Right. So I want to um, see the distance between these. Well, the distance between, and let's write this between three and 10, it will be nothing else according to the definition above, as we can see here. And let me be more specific here. This is the distance between X and Y, right? All right, the distance between three and 10 is nothing else than just the absolute value of three minus 10, which is the absolute value of negative seven, and this will be seven, right? We will see uh, later on the properties of the absolute value. And now if you want to look this uh, uh, geometrically, let's say I have here the point three, and let's just say here I have the point 10. Well, let's say I have here four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and then 10. And I want to measure the distance from here to here. Well, this is nothing else, just like we have seen above, right? If you look above at uh, uh, the absolute value of x minus y, so right, the number x, the distance between these two numbers, x and y, is nothing else than just the absolute value of x, and in this case will be three minus seven. Three minus 10, sorry, which is seven, right? The absolute value of this. And if you measure here the distance from three to, to, to 10, it's seven, right? Let me give you another example. Let's say the distance between, um, let's say negative four, negative five and four. Right? Well, the distance between these two, so the distance between negative five and four is nothing else than just the absolute value of negative five minus four. And this is negative nine, which will be nine. Again, if you want to draw a picture so that you can see it better, let's put here negative five, um, and let, so negative five, negative four, negative three, negative two, negative one, here will be zero, one, two, three, four, and uh, yeah, and four, right? the distance between these two is nine, right? It's the absolute value of negative four minus, uh, my, uh, neg negative five minus four, which is nine. This is the, the absolute value of negative nine, which will give us nine. And as you can see, if you measure the distance from negative five all the way to four, it will give you uh, nine, right? Okay. And then you can see other examples as well. Anyway, I think you've got the picture by now, but in my notes, if you look at them, uh, there are plenty of other um, of examples. And I wanna go, um, go back and I wanna, let me point out this remark, which goes back to what, um, to my initial uh, uh, observation about the absolute value of X which measures nothing else than just the distance from that point X to the origin. So let's say this, the absolute value of X is the distance, right? This is the distance from X to zero, right? Okay, uh, now let's see how do we solve equations Let's see equations um, in, uh, involving absolute value we want to see how we're going to solve this equation 
All right, let's take a, pick a simple one. Uh, for example, solve the equation. Um, let's say the absolute value of x minus 5 equals 2. R right, uh, uh, well, according to the definition, this implies nothing else than just, um, well, the quantity inside the absolute value can be uh, the same or with negative. In other words, this implies that, uh, so let's write it in this way, x minus 5 in absolute value equals 2. Uh, this is equivalent with saying that x minus 5 is equal to plus minus 2. And if you solve this equation, you have two equations here. And uh, let's just say the first one is x minus 5 equals 2. And then the second one is x minus 5 equals negative 2. From the first one, this implies that x is 7. And from the second one, this implies that uh, x is um, 3, right? So these are the two solutions for this uh, for our equation. And if you uh, plug them in, for example, if you plug in 7, five, uh, 7 minus 5 in absolute value will give you 2. So you can verify this easily. And then the second one, if you look, if you plug in 3 um, in the equation, you'll have 3 minus 5, which will be negative 2. But in absolute value, this will give us uh, uh, 2. So that's how we solve um, equations involving absolute um, uh, value. Now I want to um, solve inequalities. So inequalities or inequations, whatever you want to call them, involving absolute value. Okay, and the first one that I have in mind, uh, in fact, let's just uh, uh, do a couple of them. So the following, this will be the exercise. So the following uh, inequalities. And let's see, the first one that I have in mind is Absolute value of x minus 5 is less than 2. And the second one is, uh, let's take the same thing, uh, x minus 5 in absolute value less than or equal than 2. And the third one is x minus 5 in absolute value is greater or strictly greater than 2. Okay. Let's look at these. And uh, let's see how... Do we solve them? Well, if you look at them, let's take the first one. Um, well, there is this, if I, well, I don't know, maybe I should recall it. Uh, remember that uh, let me remind you from uh, college algebra that the absolute value of x is less or equal than one than a is equivalent with saying that um, um, that x belongs to this interval negative a a closed interval, or you can say that uh, negative a is less or equal than x and less or equal than a. And the same thing goes for um, absolute value uh, of x strictly less than a. This will be equivalent with x is in the open interval negative a a and this implies that negative a is less than x less than a so let's keep this in mind well and now the equations will become uh, simpler for example x minus 5 in absolute value less than strictly less than 2 this will be equivalent with what with negative 2 less than x minus 5 right the quantity um, inside the absolute value less than 2 and now we have the only thing we need to solve uh, these two inequations uh, from the first one. So um, 
from um, x minus 5 greater than negative 2, uh, we have that uh, x is greater than um, 5 minus 2, which will be 3. And from x minus 5 less than 2, we have that um, x is less than uh, 2 plus 5, which is 7. So this implies that x is between this interval 3 and 7 open interval. Right? Very simple. Now let's look at the second one. The second one will be very, very similar. But the only difference, this is very similar. Well, the only difference is that, well, if you look at it, is that um, we will apply the first uh, inequality, right? Because we have that the absolute value of x minus 5 is less or equal than 2. Well, we will have that x belongs to this interval, closed 3, closed 7. So here we have open, here we have closed, right? It's the same thing. I'll leave it to you as an exercise. It's the same procedure. Uh, you just copy uh, what you did in the first um, part. The only difference is that instead of uh, strictly greater, you put, or strictly less, you put less or equal or greater or equal. That's the only difference. But I'll leave it to you. I'm sure you can do it. And the third one, uh, well, we have that. Um, and let me rem remind you, remember that um, absolute value of x is greater or equal than a, right? Uh, this implies that x is in, in this uh, union of intervals, negative infinity and negative a closed, right? Um, united with positive a and positive infinity, right? That's what it means. And absolute value of x strictly greater than a, this will be equivalent with x belongs to this intervals, but this time it will be a union of open intervals, right? Anyway, I didn't write this in the notes, but I'm sure, so I'm, in this lecture uh, videos, I try to explain more in details what happens in the, in the notes. Okay, so now the picture is quite clear, I hope. Uh, well, if you look at uh, the absolute value of x minus phi is greater or equal than two, this will be equivalent with, with what? With x minus phi, is less than negative two and x minus five is greater than two, right? So this implies that um, x is less than three and x is greater than seven. And the interval, so, so x belongs to negative infinity Three united with seven positive infinity, both open intervals, right? All right, great. So this is what um, this is how we solve these uh, equations. Um, I would like to do another. Let's do some exercises. For example, what if we have something like this? So let me go back to a bit to the following equation. Okay. And this time I wanna uh, see how we solve this kind of equation. Absolute value of x plus eight is the same as absolute value of three x minus four. You see now I have an equality for both the uh, uh, two equations, both of them are in absolute value. 
Well, guess what? You can do the same thing as we did previously. So this implies that that um, that x plus eight, for example, uh, can be equal since uh, with plus minus three x minus four. We have two equations. This implies this gives us two equations. And let me write them like this. The first one is x plus eight equals three x minus four. And the second one is x plus eight equals negative three x minus four, which is nothing else than four minus three x. All right, from the first one, one can infer that um, this will give us uh, two x equals 12, or which is equivalent with x equals six. Okay, well, that's one of the solutions. And th the second one is four um, x will give us four x equals negative uh, four, which is which will give us x equals negative one, the second solution. And again, you can plug this in. If you plug it into the equation, uh, clearly, it will give you, um, for example, say six. If you plug it into the first absolute value, it will give you six plus eight, which is uh, 14. The absolute value of 14 is 14. Then you have six uh, on the second one. In the second one, you have six times three, which is 18 minus four is, again, 14. The absolute value of this is 14. And the same goes for negative one. You can check it yourself. Okay. So um, this is how we solve this kind of uh, equation when both of the, of, the, of the two quantities are in absolute value. So it's not um, um, hard, I would say. Um, well, now, and there are plenty of other examples in the, in the, um, in the notes. Now I wanna to veer towards something else. So I said this is, uh, the absolute value, let's call this, I don't know what to call it. Um, in fact, maybe, anyway, absolute value of, uh, of a real number. And now let's uh, see, so we have seen how we measure the distance between two points, but both of them are on the same line, right? Now, what I want is how to measure the distance between two points when they're in the plane. So the distance between two points in the plane. Right, so let's do this. Um, let me draw a picture first. This is the x, y axis. And uh, let's just say uh, we have the following. We just say I have here a point P. Let's say I have here the cor with coordinates X1 and Y1. And let me draw this line here. This is my point Q of coordinates X2, Y2. Right. Um, and then I project this on the Y axis and this will be Y2. Uh, this will I project this on the X axis will be X2. So this is the, these are the coordinates. Now I, I do the same thing for this. So this is X1 and this is Y1. Okay. 
Now, if I want to measure the distance between these two, right, this was the, this is the absolute value of x2 minus x1, if you want, or the absolute value of x1 minus x2, doesn't really matter. And if I want to measure the distance between um, these two here, this is nothing else than just uh, the absolute value of y2 minus y1. Okay, and now let's say this is the distance between these two. Okay, so this is the picture. And now let's, um, let's interpret this uh, picture a bit. I wanna keep it in, a, I'm not sure if, anyway, just look at it, try to visualize it. So it's quite clear. So my main goal here is to find who the, who is this guy here? Is, the, is there a formula um, for this distance for D? That is the question. Okay, let's see. All right, now let's um, write what we, uh, write down what we see on this graph. Well, we see that the horizontal um, change, let's say, this will be, let's call this delta x, is nothing else than just x2 minus x1. And now we uh, look at the vertical change. This is nothing else, delta y, which is y2 minus y1. All right, great. Well, if you look at it, the distance formula will be nothing else than just the square root of delta x squared plus delta y squared. And if you wanna write it in this way, it will be nothing else than just x2 minus x1 squared plus y2 minus y1 squared. And that's the distance formula. So it's very easy to, to, to see, all right? In fact, this is, um, well, if you want, this is just the Pythagorean theorem. If you look at this, if you look at this guy here, right? The distance, let's say here, I have another point, the distance from P to this other point, right? I can uh, write it. And then I have also the distance from this point to Q in the, the same way I can write. So this is a right angle triangle and I can find the, that that's pretty much it. Anyway, now let's talk about midpoint formula. Let's see, now we know how to compute the distance between um, two points in the plane, not just on a line. And here, like I said, just look at the picture again. See, these two points, P and Q, are just two points on the plane, right? They're not just on a line, okay? Now, the midpoint formula, let me, let me draw a picture again. Again, I have the x, y axis. And now let's just say I have uh, something like this. I have a point P here of coordinates x1, y1. And I want to, and I have a point Q here of, uh, let's say x2, y2. And here on this uh, line, I I have a, a midpoint. Let's call this M. So this guy is the midpoint of PQ of this line. Well, guess what? It's uh, this will have coordinates x1 plus x2 over two and y1 plus y2 over two. These are the coordinates of, uh, of this guy, right? Now let's give an example. Let's look uh, quick on uh, as an example. Um, now 
let's consider these two points. Um, And let's just look at, let's say, A of coordinates, let's say, negative 3 and 2, and B of coordinates uh, 9 and 1. The first thing we that we want to find is find the distance between Um, a and B. And the second is to find the midpoint um, of the line segment uh, formed by A and B. Okay, well, guess what? It's just uh, uh, it's just the distance formula. So the first one is um, the distance between uh, so D. Let's call this A B. Let's put here an absolute value if you want. Will always, will always be the distance will always be a positive number, but anyway, so it will be negative three, negative nine squared plus two minus one squared, and this computation will just give you 100, 100 square root of 145, right? And the second one, well, the midpoint uh, formula. Let's call this m mid. Uh, let m be the midpoint of AB, of the line segment uh, AB, then M will have coordinates by the midpoint formula will be negative three plus nine over two and two plus one over two. And this is nothing else than just uh, um, M coordinates um, three and three halves. Okay, so this is how we find, it's pretty straightforward, it's not, nothing to. Okay. All right, now, um, well, it looks like I have some, in, the internet is not friendly with me, keeps, uh, anyway. Now let's talk about uh, trigonometry. It's not the first time when this happened. Sometimes I was like, it, I was writing and then the internet didn't even work. And then I was like, wow. Uh, anyway, now let me talk a bit about uh, trigonometry because uh, this will be very important later on when we'll talk about functions, about trigonometric functions and so on. But you know that angles are um, uh, commonly measured Um, in degrees, right? Uh, degrees and radians. Well, let's look, uh, let's draw the circle. Well, this is not quite a circle. Let me write it here, circle. I'm not the most talented guy in drawing, I could tell you that. Uh, anyway, and now 
uh, each circle has like two, three hundred sixty degrees or two pi radians. Right? Okay. Um, well, in calculus, usually we measure uh, um, the angles in terms of radian rather than degrees. And let me just explain it a bit. For example, here when you have, here you have 90 degrees, this will be pi over two in radians. Um, for example, when you have something like, let's say you have, oops, this is nice. Oh, oh, oh. This is 90 degrees. But you can also have something like this. And let's say you have here 45 degrees, which this guy in radians will be pi over four. So it's half of, uh, pi over two, a half of 90 degrees. Or for example, you can have something like this, which will be 180 degrees. And this will be nothing else than pi radians. Right? So, and if you want to go all the way around the circle, you'll have 360 degrees or two pi radians. Right? And for example, there are, uh, let me give you some quick examples how to transform these. For example, 30 degrees. Thirty degrees is nothing else than let's say uh, well if you want to look it's two pi over uh, three hundred and sixty times uh, thirty if you want thirty degrees which will give you pi over six. For, um, another one is, uh, for example, 135 degrees, let's say. This is 2 pi over 360 times 135 degrees, which will give you 3 pi over 4. And you can keep going with the examples. Okay, let's see another one. Let's say 60 degrees. This is nothing else than um, 2 pi over 360 times 60. And this will give you nothing other than just pi over three. And you can just play around with these examples, uh, right? This is very easy to see, okay. Uh, and now let me talk about trigonometric functions a bit. Okay, and now when I want to talk about trigonometric functions, I'll just draw a um, um, right angle triangle. Well, let me draw it here. Oops. Okay, and let's just say here, um, um, this is, let's say, um, a, B, and C, right? I'll just say I have here the angle theta, right? So um, let's just denote the BC by A, which is the um, hypotenuse, right? This is how we call it. Right. And let's say this is B and this is A, or C, sorry. And now you know from Pythagora, Pythagora tells you that, that what? That uh, B squared plus C squared is nothing else than just A squared. By the way, here the notation is the following. I will just use the following notation. Um, BC will, let's denote this by A, 
CA will be B and AB will be C. So triangle ABC is a right angle triangle. Uh, with the uh, with the uh, angle A is 90 degrees or power two if you want in radians. Okay. So this is the Pythagorean theorem. Let's keep this in mind. This is the most important theorem. You, we will use it over and over again, especially when we'll talk about uh, derivatives, about, um, you will see, about rates of change and everything like that, we'll use this. <clears throat> so it's a must for you in this class. Okay, uh, this is the hypotenuse and we said that these guys are legs. Let's say this is uh, a leg and again, this is a leg. Anyway, sometimes they're called uh, the adjacent uh, uh, side opposed to, uh, let's say the angle theta or but the other one is the opposite um, side um, to the angle theta. Anyway, it doesn't really matter that much. Now, let's see some, uh, some formulas here. And also, I'd like to talk about some trigonometric formulas. So, for example, I would like to uh, see how the trigonometric version of the Pythagorean theorem looks like. Okay, and let's see. So we have this uh, formula b squared plus c squared equals i squared from, equals a squared, sorry, from the Pythagorean theorem. But also we can com compute the following. For example, let's say cosine of theta. So this theta here, right? I want to compute the cosine of theta it is nothing else than just c over a. So it's the adjacent leg over the hypotenuse, right? Um, okay. Um, for example, now sine of theta will be the opposite leg over the hypotenuse, which is b over a, right? Okay, and now, uh, well, if you want to compute the tangent of the theta, it's quite simple. The tangent of theta is nothing else than just the way it's defined is sine of theta over cosine of theta, which is, uh, well, if you want to plug this in, is b over a, everything over c over a, which is b over a times a over c, which is b over c. And the same goes for the cotangent of theta, which is nothing else than one over tangent of theta, uh, which is C over B. And you can do the same thing for the secant uh, and the cosecant. And I'll leave it to you as an exercise. Just keep in mind the secant uh, of secant of theta is one over cosine of theta and cosecant of theta is one over sine of theta. Anyway, I was looking at my notes. There, it looks like there is a mistake there. I put, uh, instead of uh, uh, C, I put H. And anyway, I'll write it with C. You, I think you can figure it out. Okay. Now let's see some trigonometric identities that uh, I believe at this point, the only two formulas that you need to know are these and then the rest will just fall. In, in the right angle triangle, you know how to express the cosine of the angle between uh, uh, a leg and, um, and the hypotenuse. You can also consider this angle here if you want. You can do this by alpha and you can compute the same thing. Anyway, you can do that. Okay. Now let's see some, about, some things about the trigonometric identities. And here, I will start with the most important one, which is the fact, let me, 
which is a trigonometric version of the Pythagorean theorem and says that sine squared of x plus cosine squared of x will always be equal to one. Always. So keep this in mind. Okay. Uh, the second one. Um, the, for example, you have that uh, you can express sine of the double angle, sine of two theta is two sine theta cosine theta. And the same thing goes for the cosine of two theta, which will be nothing else than just cosine of theta minus sine squared of theta. But now if you combine with the first one, with the you know, sine squared of x plus well, in our case, sine squared of theta plus cosine squared of theta, this will give us nothing else than just one minus two sine squared of theta. We can write it in this way. Uh, another formula, other formulas that you need to know are the following. Secant squared of theta will always be one plus tangent squared of theta, right? And cosecant squared of theta will always be uh, one plus cotangent squared of theta. So these are the most important formulas that you need to know. And uh, what I would like to do right now, before I talk about the lines in the plane and parametric equations, I'd like to remind you the table um, of, um, for trigonometric functions, so values, or trigonometric functions, let's say. Right. Okay. Um, And now let's me draw the following chart. And here I'll put the angle, in fact, no, let me draw it like this, all the way. So here I put the angle, theta, here is zero, let's say here I have pi over six, and I want to see what happens at these values, pi over four with the trigonometric functions, pi over three, then pi over two, and then pi. Hmm. Looks like this is enough. Anyway, now, now let's put the functions. Here I have sine of theta. Here I have cosine of theta. Here I have tangent, cotangent, um, um, secant, and cosecant of theta. O, ouch. Okay, so we have these. And now let's see what value we have for each one of them. All right, let's see. So sine of uh, at zero, we have zero. Sine of uh, pi over six of so 30 degrees will be one half. And here we'll have uh, square root of two over two which is the same as one over square root of two. Uh, then at pi over three, what do we have? We have that it's square root of three over two. Pi over two, we have one. And at pi, we have zero. Well, for cosine, we have at zero, it will be one. Then at pi over six will be square root of three over two. Then at pi over four, it will be the same as with the sine. Then here I'll have one half. Then at, uh, here we'll have zero. And then here I'll have negative one. As you can see, um, now tangent is quite clear. It's the sine over cosine, so I will just copy so it will be zero. Um, here will be um, 
square root of three over three, right? It will be one. It will be um, square root of three. And um, here will be, well, as you can see, uh, well, this will be undefined, right? Um, then uh, here will be zero. I have one over zero. We'll see what's, what happens with, with this. Anyway, cotangent of uh, theta will be, um, well, um, a, So here will be uh, at zero will be undefined, right? Here will be square root of three, so it's one over um, okay, one over tangent. Here will be one. It will be um, square root of three over three, right? At pi over two will be zero, and then at pi will be undefined. Okay. Now what we uh, were left with secant. Remember secant is one over cosine, and cosecant is one over sine. Uh, with secant, we will have the following. So it's here will be undefined. Uh, it will be two. Uh, square root of two, uh, two over square root of three, one and undefined, right? Yes. And with the, with the um, cosecant, do we want over sine? Um, So with the cosecant, we will have the following. So it will be one, um, two over square root of three, um, um, let's see, square root of two, two, uh, undefined, and one. Okay. So these are the exact uh, values for the trigonometric functions. Anyway, so we um, all right. Now let's talk about um, uh, lines in the plane. And parametric equations. Now, the first thing I want to talk about is the slope of a line. All right, let's draw a picture again. And here, let me draw a line like this. Um, let's say I have the two points here. Let's say P is here and Q is here. And let's just say P of coordinates x1, y1, and Q of coordinates x2, y2. And um, okay, Ouch. this is the line that passes through these two points. And now let me draw the Okay, and here I will have, um, this is, will be the delta y here. This will be y2 minus y1. And here will be delta x, which was x2 uh, minus x1. Well, guess what? The slope m uh, is the slope of, um, of the line PQ and um, 
this will have the following formula. Let's call it like this. M sub P Q will be delta Y over delta X. And this will give us nothing else than just Y2 minus Y1 over X2 minus X1. And guess what? If we put here this angle to be the, the theta, this will be nothing else than just the tangent of theta. If you look at, because based on what we, our previous considerations, this will be a right angle triangle here, right? And the tangent of theta, is, uh, that ratio between x, um, well, delta y over delta x is nothing else than just the tangent of theta. So we said that this is guy. This guy is the slope of um, the line PQ. What does it actually say this? Well, um, the slope actually says that um, the slope says that um, says how fast is uh, is y changing with respect to x That's what it says, basically, the slope. For example, let me give you another example. Of how, uh, uh, for ex if we have something like this, let me draw some lines. I want you to see geometrically what do I mean by this. And let's just uh, I have this line. Here, the slope will be positive, right? Um, for, uh, let me draw another line. So the slope for this line will be positive. Uh, what if I have a slope like this? A line like this. Here, the slope for this will be negative. Um, what if um, I draw something like, let me draw another picture. I don't want to put too many lines on this. What if we have something like this, another line? Here, the slope will be zero. This is parallel to the uh, x axis. And for example, if I have something like this parallel to the y axis, here, the slope, um, the slope M is undefined. All right, that's what I'm, so these are the pictures. This is what the, this is a scenario that could happen for the, for the, For the slope, and now let's see. Let's write something. Let's see about the slope intercept. Form uh, of a line. So the slope uh, intercept form will be nothing other than just y is m x plus b, where m is the slope. Um, Right, and this guy is zero. This point of corner zero B is nothing else than just this is um, the y-intercept. Right, and now let's talk about lines a bit. I want to see which one is uh, how uh, well lines. What it happens if they're parallel? If they're perpendicular? What happens to the slope? Of these lines. Um, let's talk about parallel and perpendicular lines. Right? Well, let's say if L1 uh, and L2 are non vertical. Uh, lines with slopes m1 and m2, then 
Well, let's see. L1 is parallel to L2. So this means, let me write here L1 and L2 are parallel. If and only if, guess what? The two slopes are equal. M1 is the same as M2. And now the second one, L1 is perpendicular to L2, or perpendicular. If and only if, well, the product of the two slopes, M1 times M2 is negative one. Or if you want, you can write this as M2 is, uh, or M1 is negative one over M2 is the same thing. Now let me draw some pictures uh, because I want you to see exactly how uh, everything looks uh, uh, geometrically. Um, let me see, for example, let me see how the picture will look like for parallel lines. And again, let me draw, draw it in this way. This is x, y, so the x, y axis. Uh, let me draw this, this will be line one, let's say. This is L1. And let me just uh, draw here, let's say this is L2. Well, I draw them uh, almost, uh, I hope they're parallel. That's my intention. Anyway, this is of the equation mx plus a, uh, and this is y of the equation mx plus b. Well, as you can see, this is my hope so for them to have a, and here it is the point of intersection, let's say zero b, and here is the point of intersection zero a, right? Uh, well, as you can see, this is uh, the scenario. The two slopes are equal, but the lines are parallel. And now let me draw a picture for perpendicular lines. All right? We want to see what happens in this case. So let me draw it again. Um, let me just say we have, let me say I have a line like this. Let's call this L1. This will be, a, let's say Y equals negative one over MX plus B. And let's say we have another line. Uh, let me draw it like this. Okay, oh, it's perpendicular. I wanna make sure it is. This is L2, right? And this will have the equation MX plus a. Well, as you can see here in this case, if you look at the slopes, m times negative one over m will be um, negative of one. So this is what it means for the two lines to, this is how the equations would look like. So these two lines will be, per, uh, will be perpendicular. And now, well, uh, I just want to do a, a problem and probably I think I'm going to stop here. Uh, well, it will be a long problem though, but I think with these uh, and this problem, uh, everything will, will be put together. All the notions that we have seen in this lecture will be put together. Um, anyway, let's try the, the problem. In fact, this is just an exercise. I want Okay, the exercise, well, we don't have uh, many tasks here. Find the equations in slope intercept um, intercept um, form uh, for the line that satisfies 
the following requirements. Now, let's see, the first one, uh, passes through um, the points, let's say, A of coordinates negative one and four, actually one and four, let's say, one and four, and B of coordinates, um, three and six, and the second one um, passes through um, the points, let's take now, we'll take some, let's say C of negative one and seven this time, and D with negative two and nine. Three, horizontal, um, line uh, through, uh, let's say, negative two and five, negative five. And now we want to see uh, the fourth one is vertical line. Um, through um, negative two, negative five, through the same point. Let's see, the fifth one is, let's consider the following line, let L be the line, three X plus two Y equals five. And now what we want is to find an equation Uh, of the line uh, that is, and now A parallel, so we will know what happens here, to L, and it passes through Um, the point, let's say P of coordinates four and seven and B perpendicular to L, to the line L and passes through the point, the same point four and of coordinates four and seven and now the sixth task and find uh, the equation of the perpendicular line passing through um, the midpoint so now let's involve the midpoint a bit um, of the line segment um, connecting um, these points, let's say E of coordinates negative three and seven and F of coordinates, let's say four and one. Oh, that's a pretty long problem. You can see we have a lot of things to do here. But anyway, we'll go step by step. You will see that uh, it's not hard. You just have to basically apply the formula. There's nothing, nothing special around here. Let's start with the first one. And now let's see, what does, what does the first one asks us to do? We need to find the equation in slope-intercept form. Well, remember what the slope-intercept form is. And um, 
of the line that uh, satisfies the following, passes through these points. Remind, let me remind you that the slope intercept form um, is given by is y equals uh, mx plus b, right? Um, okay, and now we need to find uh, the slope. The slope, we said that a and b, right, is the slope that passes through those two points, we denote it by m uh, a b, which will be delta y over delta x, which will be nothing else than six minus four over three minus one. And this guy will give us two over two, which is one. Okay, that's the slope. And now we wanna use one point, it's not to use one point, uh, to find uh, that b. We need to find B. Right? We know M, but we don't know B. So we need to find B. Uh, well, we can use one point. You can use any point you want. Uh, we can use the point, let's say, um, Let's use the point um, A, one, four. And we have, and we can write the equation and we have the following. Um, we have four equals one times one plus B. And from here, it follows that B equals three, right? Keep in mind that the coordinates, so I can write this as y equals, uh, I know the slope is one, so it's four times uh, one times um, um, uh, one plus b, so b is three. And it follows that the equation, um, the equation is given by y equals x plus three. So that's the equation of uh, the line in um, in um, slope intercept form, right? Now let's see the second one, which is pretty similar to the first one. Again, we have to use this point, but I'll leave it to you as an exercise. So it's exercise for you. Anyway, it's done in the notes. Well, the only thing I'm gonna tell you is that uh, the equation will be, well, it's pretty similar. The equation is given by by uh, well, at some point, if I look in the notes, I mean, just um, it will be um, negative two x plus five. Okay. I'll leave it to you as an exercise. It's you just mimic the first. It's the, it's basically the same as with the first one. Now, the third one, we're asked to uh, this, uh, see the horizontal line. Horizontal line, let me draw the picture. So we have this, right? Uh, let's just say, um, right, this is a, and here I'll have, um, okay, let me look, horizontal to negative uh, uh, two and a negative five. So this is B, this is negative, um, so B Y equals negative five, okay. So for a horizontal, Uh, line, guess what happens with the slope? 
the slope is zero. We said this earlier. Well, the equation will be nothing else than just zero times x plus b. Well, in this case, this is nothing else than just, uh, well, in our case will be y equals negative five. Right, it's quite simpler, simply because you can just plug in uh, pl into this, the, the point of coordinates negative five, uh, two and negative five. So that's the equation. Okay. Now, let's see what happens when we have a vertical line. Well, unfortunately for a vertical line, um, it's not defined. For vertical line, the slope is not defined. For vertical line, the slope is not defined. Right? So in other words, now we'll have the following picture here. Let me just draw it. So this will be just a line x equals five. Right, we'll have here the point five. So the equation is is given by x equals five. That's it. Now let's see the fifth one. So the, for the fifth one, if I remember correctly, this is um, okay. So I have that line three x plus two y equals five. <coughs> okay, and I need to know. Mm -hmm. That passes through. Okay. Uh, let's see. Um, the line L is given by, um, and let's write it in this way L is 3x plus 2y equals 5. Right? <clears throat> um, and now let's just write this a bit. Let's rewrite it, which can be rewritten as as well. We can uh, write y in terms of x, and this will be y will be nothing else than just. Um, negative three over two x plus five over two, right? And now guess what? You'll, he, you'll see that this guy M here, which is negative, this will be M and this will be B. So we, we, we this is the slope intercept for, this is, as you can see here, negative three over two is the slope. And now we have some information here that we would like to explore. We know that, um, that there is a line parallel to, uh, to our line L. So a line parallel to L has the same slope. Right? So in this case, um, well, so this line, so we have the equation y equals negative three halves times x plus, let's say a. Well, we need to find this a. But now it's, uh, we do the same thing as we did for the first one. We can plug in.
okay? And we said that, that this uh, will take the y coordinate, seven, this will be the slope, negative three over two, right? Times four plus a. And we can solve this equation, which is very easy, and this will give us, well, you can do the computations, it will be 40 minus uh, six, okay, 13, right? Five, yeah, it's 13. Okay, so we say that the line parallel to L, which passes through the point P, Has the, uh, has, has the equation y equals, right? So this will have what equation? y equals the slope was negative 3 half, so negative 3 uh, over 2 times x plus 13. So that was pretty much it. It wasn't a big deal, okay? And now, we're interested, let's see, this was the uh, fourth one. And now, wait, 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 uh, we wanted to talk about the, the line that is uh, perpendicular now. So this was part A, and now part B from, we want to see a line um, perpendicular to L, what happens to a line that is perpendicular to L? In other words, what happens uh, to the slope of that? Do you remember what we said? Well, we said that uh, we'll have the slope. We, so if I have two lines, I know that the product of the slopes will be negative one. So in other words, a line that is perpendicular to L will have the slope negative one over M. So let's use this information. So I know that the slope of my line is negative. Um, so this means that um, the slope uh, of this line that is perpendicular to L L is gi given by, so we know that the, uh, it's negative one over negative uh, three halves, which is nothing else than two thirds. That's the slope. So now we can write the equation. And then the equation um, of, um, of the of the perpendicular line line to L is given by uh, Y equals, so the slope is two thirds times X plus, let's call this C, right? All right, and we need to find this C. So again, we do the same story. So, um, in fact, I'll leave it to you as an exercise. So find C. So this will be an exercise for you. And, well, I'm going to just uh, tell you, according to the computation, C, well, let me just rephrase it. We find that C a equals 13 over 3. And I'll leave this to you as an exercise to find out. It's basically the same thing as we, as we did. So the equation is given by y is 2 thirds plus 13 over 3. Thir 2 thirds times x plus 13 over 3. Okay, 
So this is how we uh, uh, find. The, and the last one, right? We have one more thing to do is to find the midpoint of this uh, of the segment, right? So let's see. Uh, to find the equation of the perpendicular line that passes through the midpoint of the line segment connecting those two. Okay, basically it's the same thing. The only th information we have now is that uh, we need to uh, write the midpoint of the line segment, which is quite uh, easy to, to do. The midpoint, Let's denote this midpoint by M. The midpoint M will have coordinates, right? It was uh, negative three, what's four over two and seven minus one over two. Anyway, M will be of uh, coordinates one half and three, right? And the slope um, of the line formed by these points, formed by the point E of coordinates we said negative three, seven, and F of coordinates four, negative one, is, let's write it like this, MEF will be seven minus negative one over negative three minus four, which will give us negative eight over seven. So now if um, a line is perpendicular then um, its slope its slope um, is negative 1 over m so in our case this will be 7 over 8 then the equation, the equation um, of the perpendicular line perpendicular line is y equals 7 over 8 times x plus b. Again, the same story, we need to find b, right? So we need to find b. Okay, well, keep in mind that this line, so keep in mind that um, this line um, passes through um, the point uh, M of coordinates one half and three. Well, we can use this information to find B so uh, let's use this to find B. So we have that uh, three is seven over eight times one half plus B. And now if you do the computations, this will imply, and I'll leave it to you as an exercise to do this. It's this basic algebra. I'm just gonna, according to the notes, B is 41 over 16. Okay, so finally, uh, the equation uh, of the perpendicular line is given by y equals seven over eight times x plus 41 over 16. Right. Okay. And I think I'm going to stop here for today. I think it's more than enough. Um, 
next time um, uh, I will talk about uh, um, about for functions, about graphs of functions. We'll talk about also about inverse functions and so on. Okay, thank you.